What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. Now for the last few years, I've been using this Rode um, Procaster for the occasional live streams, but mostly for um, sort of voiceovers on gaming benchmark videos, um, anything that sort of doesn't have my face in it all the time, because generally I'm sort of sat the opposite away around from me in this desk, so you can see all my nicey nicey desk. Um, and that's where I've been using this, this little Octava MK012 overhead um, hypercardioid condenser uh, microphone. Now the problem has been since I moved into this sort of setup, um, this is a massive space here. So I've got the lounge over there, which I have got a room divider on, which I've added a blanket for, um, for today's video. Obviously this back wall here, I want to be getting a green screen or something, and then I'll probably, you know, hang a blanket on it when I'm facing the other way. But there has been a lot of room noise. And that has been a problem for me because for videos like this, I don't mind having a microphone in front of me, but when I've got the whole desk sat around, I've already got so much gear in front of me, I just like to sort of have that bit of freedom and that bit of space. But I think I'm going to have to admit defeat. I'm going to make sure I'm going to get everything sorted first, um, sort of in the regards to, um, you know, all of the audio isolation, what I can do. So some uh, thicker foam panels than the ones I've got here in front of me, probably going to add a curtain where I've got the blind there. So you know, hopefully it could, could get better and I could use the Octava, but I'm thinking it's probably not going to be what I want. OK, and because I know I'm probably going to have a, to have a microphone in front of me, which, again, it probably won't be a condenser either, um, you know, like a larger diaphragm condenser because it's going to pick up too much noise. I've decided that I might as well just upgrade to, you know, the industry standard broadcast dynamic microphone in the Shure SM7B. So I just wanted to use this video today, sort of a, you know, initial impressions. I used it a little bit last night, but just going to plug it in and see what I think about it. Now, I'm going to show you what I've got it plugged into. Hopefully this doesn't go wrong. Using OBS to record all of this stuff. And it's just off a webcam because my um, action cam that runs as a webcam was screwing up. But we've got the Presonus Studio 24C here for the Rode Procaster at the moment. As you can see, the gain is set to about two o'clock there um sort of one two o'clock and i am using a fat head okay i've got a fat head um plugged into the back of here so that is quite a lot of gain for the presonus but that is because it only has 45 db of gain if you wanted to run this mic or the sm7b without where are we yeah without a cloud lifter something like the audion evo 4 would be great for you it's got a really nice headphone output as well i mean the only reason i've actually got the presonus is because I'm not going to be running it today because I've got another video on that, is because I picked up the Behringer Ultra Gain preamp and I'm also using the Composer 2600. Um, so I can add um, compression, de because I have got a very sibilant voice and a few other bits and bobs as well. So that's something that I'm going to do a whole separate video on. Um, and the reason that I've gone for the Presonus over the Audion is that the Evo 4 actually has a minus 10 dB pad on the line input. So I was actually having to add makeup gain on the Evo 4, which is what I didn't want to do as in with the Presonus. I can run the gain, you know, all the way down below, below, right down at the bottom. But yes, the Rode Procaster then. Now I've been using this microphone for about three years now, and it is a very good microphone. It is one that I would recommend to any streamers, podcast creators, voiceovers, all of that stuff that you want to do. I would fully recommend this mic and also its little brother, the pod mic, I have got it on the shock mount and I have got the bigger foam pad on the end of it. Now, one thing people complain about this one is that it's quite boomy, especially when they're making comparisons to the SM7B that we'll put on at the moment. And part of the reason because of that is because the capsule on the SM7B is a lot further back. Um, so that's where this one can sound a little bit more boomy. But with some EQ and stuff, uh, maybe using just like a high pass filter. And a few other bits and bobs, it is nice. Now, it does have a little bit bump, I think, in the upper registers. So I normally have to add, you know, quite a heavy de um, And I'm not going to add anything to the audio today, minus probably a de And we'll just level out all the gain. But yeah, really like this microphone and I'd recommend it to anyone. Um, when it's £150, if you, I'd probably say the pod mic for 100 is quite good value. You can often get this on sale for like £120. That's where I'd choose it over the pod mic. But it is chunky. I don't know if we can Let's have a look at it there. Like, that is a unit. I mean, that's an absolute unit, isn't it? <laughs> All set up like that um, as well. So I think if I'm going to have this, if I'm sat facing the opposite way, I'm, I've been testing it more that I would have it shooting up at me. So I'd be sort of like here on it with it just um, 
pointing up a little bit, but I'd fully recommend this. I actually only paid £70 from this, and ironically, it's because I ordered the Rode Caster, the USB version of it, and they sent me the um, XLR one, and this was actually at a time when this was still kicking at around £200, and I thought I was going to get the USB one, so super happy about that, um, and I did have an audio interface, so it wasn't a screw-up, but yeah, I just decided, you know, sod it. I want something new. I can't buy graphics cards. Well, it's not that I can't buy graphics cards. It's that they're too expensive and I don't want to buy them. I'm not overpaying for them. Although I might be, which is going for another video that I'm going to be uh, bringing out in a few weeks. But yeah, it's just hard at the moment because why do I want to buy gaming gear that none of you can buy and test it and show it on the channel? I'm just not motivated in making gaming videos, spending hours doing it on stuff that most of you can't go out and buy and it even messes up the price to performance stuff. But yeah, I'm waffling on. So I think this is because I'm saying goodbye to my Procaster. Like, I'm listening back to it now. This is how I've been listening to my voice for a few years now. So shall we plug in the uh, SM7B, an extra £200 on a microphone? Was it worth it? Let's find out. So this is the SM7B then. And I have had to um, turn the gain up just a little bit more, just to sort of get it to the level that I want to. Um, and that's probably definitely something I'm missing from the Audion Evo 4 is... The uh, let me get to the right camera. Oh god, getting used. To, I bought stream decks and all sorts of stuff recently. I'm sort of like stepping out and just using an interface and a camera and trying to record it all separately. It's it's, it's ragging my brain, but yeah, the headphone amp output on the um Presonus 24C it's it's okay if you're using lower impedance headphones, not if you're rocking DT 990 250 ohms, ohms, Sherlock Holmes 50 ohms. Now to me, it's just apparent like straight away um with the sm7b it just it just feels throughout the entire range just grander there feels like there's something a bit more on it now i'm not using the low cut here and i'm not using the um presence boost i did test the presence boost out and it doesn't really work well for my voice like i said being that sort of sibilant but you can do that um to add a bit more air frequencies and things like that but i think it's best to do that afterwards in eq um now there are actually a couple of buttons on my behringer device that do do that, that do add a nice little presence boost and sort of work on the low end a bit. And those are things that I will be using. And again, I'll show you in that video. I might even do that video tomorrow or in the next couple of weeks because that's something that I want to get going down now. So at the moment, I'm using like these little webcams and action cams I'm testing with to do this multi stuff, but I'm probably going to buy some more Sony cameras, um, which is going to add more to the workflow. So for me, it's about getting the best sound that I can in beforehand. So ideally, all I want to do is maybe just add a touch more DSR. maybe do I need to add a little bit of a low cut and then just normalize the entire track and you know I can see why everyone likes this microphone now I am considering also getting an RE20 to test um, just to see what it sounds like um, because I've got sort of I think I can't remember I bought this one but I can return it up to 60 days so I think that's something that I might test out as well and I've got the um, bigger phone filter so like I said you can get closer to this one than you can with the Procaster um, but you can see sort of there, you know, what I mean, I do overpronounce stuff. So I'm probably someone that is better losing a little bit of that um, proximity effect and being sat a little bit further back. So I do overemphasize my piece. Basically, from spending this much money on microphone and audio gear, all I'm realizing is that I've still got a horrible voice. I mean, like mic technique and all of that stuff's like a whole nother, a whole nother ballpark. Um, but yeah, this is this is a very good microphone. But obviously, there are the other considerations like. People will say, I know a lot of people will say on this, you don't need to use a cloud lifter with the Evo 4 and maybe some of like, um, I think like the native instruments are complete. And I, and I do agree with that, but I do think they sound better when the gain's not being pushed so much, even though the preamps in this are really, really nice. And it's the same thing as well. So I've got the ultra gain preamp to power um, beforehand for the composer, which is again, like I said, I'll show you in that video. And even on that one as well, you'd say, oh, you use an external preamp. Why have you even gone to the expense of adding a fat head in as well? And it's again, it's just to keep the gain down low. And to be fair, the um, ultra gain is just sort of a short term thing until I can afford a real fancy, fancy ass preamp. But, you know, it's a lot of stuff in the way here. Um, I've also been testing with the fat head as well. And you can just plug it pretty much if you're not running a long run. You can have it coming straight out the audio interface. But... I don't like the way the cable comes out the side of the top here. Some people might really like it, but I like the cable coming out of the back. You know what I mean? I don't see many broken sure microphones, but just this little this little thing in here. Do you know what I mean? 
how is that going to be? But um, yeah, I definitely want to get all the sound treating done. I think that's something that, that I want to do. Because just with this, like, so like with the little Octava, it's a hypercardioid. So you've got it pointing down like that. So it's basically picking up the sound behind me. And all I did was just string up a blanket the other day. And that massively improved it. So that'll be the sort of thing, you know, I'd like a green screen here so you don't have to see the wallpaper. But then obviously when I'm sat around the other way, I can pop up the green screen, put a towel on it. I've got a towel up over there and add in some curtains as well because of reflections. And that is the problem. That is the problem with all this stuff. You can spend a fortune on audio gear. Do you know what I mean? You can spend a fortune on all of this stuff. But if your room's not treated and it's not right, it's a, it's a pain. Like I've bought so many microphones in the last year trying to get stuff done but this is going to be something that's kept i'm really really liking the sound of this sure microphone but like i said it's just an initial sort of test and play around i just wanted to think to me is it worth it is it worth 200 pounds more it's a hard one because i do love i love my rude okay i do love this microphone it's saying is something worth so much more money is it's, it's just so so subjective because do I want my audio to sound 5% better? Even let's just say it's 5% better, but that's how it is in all of my videos. You know, then it's worth it, isn't it? But it is a hard one. You can still get fantastic results out of that microphone, but this is just the, this is all I'll need. If I don't like the RE20, this is all I'll ever need for maybe 10 or 20 years. So actually for 350 pounds and maybe all the other bits that go along with it, it's not that big of an investment. Um, but yeah, either one that you had, I'd say you'd be super happy with. Like I say, the problem with the Procaster is it's just a little bit too boomy. You just have to back off it. You just have to back off it a little bit. Um, as in where this one is, you can get, you know, all the way up on it and get your voice all sexy and stuff. But um, anyway, that's it. Just a quick little test. I wanted to just test out loads of different stuff. Recording an OBS, multi-camera is one of the cameras actually started chipping out. Um, it stopped working. So uh, <laughs> we had to get rid of that one because I wanted to have a angle from over there as well testing with a couple of blankets dotted about the place not quite where they need to be yet as well and most importantly testing with the new microphone the sm7b it's the one that everybody wants so yeah let me know what you think